Hey YouTube, today we are making apple cider braised pork ribs and they are out of this world. Alrighty, first step is we're gonna get our ribs out of the package and get them seasoned. And this is about five and a half pounds. Um, I bought this at the warehouse club so they're, uh, it's a big package. Um, you could do this recipe easily uh, with half. So there you go. I happen to have quite a big family, so this works for us. So we're gonna get uh, kosher salt. We're gonna be pretty liberal with our salt. We like to season in layers as we go. If each layer tastes good, and is correctly seasoned. The final product will taste better. So this is just black pepper. And my pepper mill just ran short. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to refill it. I love country style ribs, I really do. I think they're delicious. Um, but they're a bit of a pain, you know. They are like other tough cuts of meat that require a long, slow cooking time. And don't confuse these with short ribs. These are not short ribs. All right, so this is the amount of seasoning you wanna see, okay? You do wanna be aggressive. These are pretty thick pieces, so they can handle it. I have done short rib, or not short ribs. I have done these country style ribs a million different ways. They take really well to just about any kind of flavor profile you want to put on them. I've done Asian styles and I've done them with chipotle and cumin, but this time, the middle of fall right here in East Tennessee, we're talking apple cider. Okay, so I have a nice big pan, and I'll show it to you here in a second. And a nice big pan, which I forgot to turn on. But you want it on medium heat, and you want a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in it. Because the first thing, we're gonna do these in the slow cooker, of course, but the first thing we wanna do is get a really nice deep sear on all sides. And that's for nothing but flavor, all right? So I'll show you that once I get it going. Okay, here we go, in the pan. And you see how we've got sizzle? You need sizzle. Yeah, because we're searing these guys. So we want it kind of hot. All right, so this is all we're gonna do for a few minutes. I'm just gonna keep seasoning and searing until they're nice and brown on all sides. And then as each one of them gets browned, I'm gonna transfer it over here to my crock pot and we'll go on to the next step. I wanted to show you something real quick. See this one? This one is nicely brown. That one, I put too soon. So be patient and wait until you get a rich, deep color on it. Um, and the other thing is, don't put too much in your pan at once. Give yourself plenty of room. If you put too much in the pan, it won't brown at all. They'll just steam. This way, the steam has room to escape and you get the caramelization. Caramelization? What? Yeah, just be patient. That's right. That's right. <laughs> My daughter's giving lessons. Actually, she had a good point. If it's still sticking to the pan, it's not ready to turn. As it caramelizes, it will release from the skillet and you know that it's ready to go. Alrighty, so I'm gonna finish these off and get them over here in the hot part of my slow cooker and I'll be back. All right, we are all browned up and I wanted to show you something. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. Watch your fawn developing in the bottom of your pan. You don't want it to get too dark. If it goes too dark, you're burned. And that's not delicious. All right, to this, we're gonna add one large ah, yellow onion. There we go. And I've got two stalks of celery, a large carrot, and about three cloves of garlic in this stuff. Now, when you're doing this section, make sure you get in here and really scrape up all that stuff. We worked really hard to develop all those flavors. 
by caramelizing. That's because he didn't work hard. That wasn't hard. It took him a minute. So I don't know why I said that. I'm not going to do it. It's real hard. Uh, we will, anyway, we got all those beautiful flavors. We want to make sure they end up in our final dish. So just take a minute as you're sauteing your veggies and scrape it all up. Da, 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 da. It'll all come up. As the vegetables release their moisture, it'll all pop up and it'll end up right where we want it to be. All right, we're going to give this about five minutes just until they get nice and soft and start to get fragrant, and I'll be back. Alrighty, we are just about ready to go. So I've got to get our veggies. And we just did, you know, five minutes. They look like that. They're nice and brown. We got, you see the bottom of the skillet. All the fond has been up. And we're just going to, has been up, has been picked up. And we're just putting this right over the top of the of the ribs in the slow cooker. And now we're gonna give it whoop, threw some across the counter. We're gonna give it some braising liquid and a little bit more flavor. So I've got a tablespoon of dried thyme. You could use fresh. I actually wish I had some. Um, I'm out. So you would use uh, five or six good sprigs of fresh thyme. And then I have about half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. You don't really want it spicy, but it's nice to kind of wake it all up. And then I have two bay leaves. These are just regular sized bay leaves, right in there. A cup and a half of apple cider. We're at the time of year where all the farmers have sent all their fresh pressed apple cider to the grocery store so you walk in and it's just right there in front of you <clears throat> it is so tempting all right this is one cup oh i'm sorry one half cup <laughs> i don't know why i said don't put a cup in there that's too much one half cup of apple cider vinegar a little acid to go with the sweet and finally one can of diced tomatoes. You could use um, tomato sauce if you wanted. I like the chunkiness because this is kind of a rustic dish. You could do whatever size dice you like. You can even deglaze your pan with a little bit of um, tomato paste. All right, guys, that is what we look like. Why are we not focusing? Why is this always my issue? There we go. All right, so this is what we look like. And we're just going to seal this up and I'm going to set the timer to six to eight hours. So I want it to go, oh, it would help if I actually pointed it where I'm working. So I'm going to set this for eight hours and that's it. Ready to walk away. How easy is that? All right, we're back after about seven hours and this is what we look like. That is perfect. Okay, so you can go ahead and serve this just like this, okay? These ribs, woo! See, they are absolutely falling apart and that is perfect. Or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is the next step, and I'm gonna create a sauce out of all this luscious juice and stuff that's left behind. So I'm gonna take this entire thing, I'm gonna pour it through this colander into that skillet, put it on the stove, and show you how to make a sauce that's to die for. Alrighty, so this is about three tablespoons of cornstarch, and I'm going the wrong direction. <laughs> Today has been one of those days. It's Halloween and the kids are absolutely insane. All right, so to this, we're gonna add just a little bit of water. Doesn't take much. We're making a slurry, which is a great way to thicken sauces if the liquid is already hot. So I drained off all the liquid. Well, maybe 85% of it. There's still a little bit in the bottom. Um, all the liquid, and I've got it over here in that big old saucepan. It's not a saucepan, it's a skillet. So I've got it over here in the skillet. And that doesn't want to stir up. If you're trying to mix cornstarch and water and it doesn't mix right away, just sit for a second. It'll, 
it'll loosen up. And if it sits longer than that, it'll separate and you just whisk it right back up again. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. So, there we go. So over here we have our brazing liquid, just right here. And it's kind of, here, let me get a spoon. I wanna show you something. It's kind of thin, see? There's a lot of, um, probably a good bit of gelatin in that from the bones of those ribs, but the sauce itself is pretty thin. And we wanna thicken it up. So that cornstarch slurry is just gonna go right in there. <clears throat> and we whisk it. And cornstarch will thicken just as soon as it comes up to a boil. So this makes a lightning fast sauce. Your food doesn't have enough time to even think about getting cold. All right, so we're going to crank that heat up a bit. And here is when we taste. Ah! Sorry, I'm trying to reach. <laughs> Here's when we taste to see what kind of flavors we have going on. Mm. Oh, yum. Actually, you know what that needs? A little bit of salt. All right, so we're gonna give it some kosher salt. So we seasoned, last time we added salt, remember, was back when we seasoned the ribs. There's only about a teaspoon and a half of salt in there. Six grains right there. <laughs> so it did need a little bit of salt, and I think it needs a little bit of acid. So I am going to, i turn my camera off. I can't do that and reach and show the camera, but I'm gonna grab my cider vinegar, hang on. Okay, a couple teaspoons of cider vinegar, just to kind of brighten it up, okay? It's a um, very richly flavored sauce, and that little bit of acid <clears throat> will be a really nice balance against how rich it is. All right, you can see it's starting to thicken up. Get a spoon, just a little thicker, see? That's all we need, just some body to it. Now, here is... Our last step, we're gonna take our sauce and pour it right back over the top of those gorgeous ribs. So here are our ribs. I just stuck them right back in the pot. And that glossy, beautiful sauce, right back over. And that, y'all, is it. Cider braised pork, country style pork ribs. And it took no time. It tastes like you were in here all day long, but we were off playing Halloween because <laughs> nobody wants to spend a holiday in the kitchen. Nobody. All right, final taste. Let's see how we did. <clears throat> Can I find a, oh yeah, look at that. See, that's, that's so tender. Forget about fork tender, how about spoon tender, right? Mmm, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That right there, y'all, is perfect. Hey YouTube, 